Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the great outdoors. In this episode, we continue our celebration of NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries 50th year of ocean conservation and stewardship. Our guest today on the Outdoor Adventure Series is Matt McIntosh. Matt is a visual information specialist at the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries via the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. He provides graphic design, illustration, photography, video, and motion graphics expertise. Matt, it is a pleasure to have you on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Welcome. Thank you, Howard. It's exciting to be here. Fantastic. And I, I think you are episode number six that I have recorded, and you are now continuing the streak of envy. I envy <laughs> you guys because you all have the coolest jobs. Let me tell you that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I think so, too. Yep. Well, that's good. So listen, uh, for the next 30, 45 minutes, and if we go a little longer, I hope you're okay with that. I would just love to learn more about you and the work that you're doing for the National Marine Sanctuaries. And and, and also because of your connection through the foundation, tell us, we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about the foundation as well. But right now, share a little bit about your background and 30,000 foot view. How'd you get... An, what was that path to get to this space where you are today? Well, I mean, I've always been kind of interested in art. And maybe that's because I didn't do so well in school and other subjects. I did find out that I had dyslexia. So that kind of held me back a little bit. So I ended up just doing things I really liked as a, as a younger kid. So I kind of excelled a little bit in that. But yeah, then I went to college and I concentrated on um, applied media arts with a concentration in graphic design and photography. That led me to my first professional job, which was at a medical magazine, basically just putting text and pictures on a page for many different magazines in the medical field. And then a couple more jobs, I ended up at NOAA, um, not with sanctuaries, I, I was actually with marine protected areas and the National Estuarine Research Reserves, did a little work for fisheries and then a position opened up in sanctuaries and I, I, I went for it. Fantastic. And a couple of questions just to kind of circle back and unpack what you just shared with us. First, where did you go to, where did you grow up? Let's share that first. I grew up in Maryland, a town called Crofton, Maryland. It's kind of like right in the middle. If you were to draw a triangle between Washington, Baltimore and Annapolis, it's pretty much right in the center. Okay. I grew up there and then I went to school. Um, in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, which is right about 20 minutes south of Lake Erie. Okay. I went there to wrestle and also for art. They have a really good wrestling team there. Wrestling and art, those are like... Very, very different. Very I different. I, I can see that one, one or the other is going to kind of cause you some problems in a bar. Well, I think it, it definitely messed me up with my identity. I mean... I'm sitting there doing art classes with some very artistic, creative people. And then I end up practice with some very intense sports fanatics. So it's very, it's very different. It's kind of, it was interesting. It's funny. I uh, did a podcast earlier today out here in Las Vegas, where I live, first choice a tree service. And the general manager went to UNLV as a former wrestler, football player, lineman, big guy, lots of uh, artwork on his arms nice. and nicest guy in the world. He loves climbing trees and just kind of work in the world of being a, an arborist and running the tree service for the company. And, you know, we go to school, we have these interests in variety, which is great because you've got the artistic side, you've got the physical fitness side, and that's pretty cool. As you landed in the world of Noah even before the sanctuaries, had you had an affinity for the outdoor space, for the water activities on the water? I, I, yeah, definitely. I was an outdoor kid. I mean, 
any and all free time I had was always spent outdoors. Vacations were always at the beach or a lake in Wisconsin where I had family. Mm -hmm. So we were doing all sorts of water sports, fishing. I really took to the outdoors later in life because my family wasn't big into backpacking or anything like that. Right. But I, I took a huge interest in that after college, after actually, yeah, after college, way after college. <clears throat> so I do that now with my brother and some other family members. So we like to visit national parks. I mean, yeah, I still, I, I just love being outside. I, I, I totally get it. I grew up in the Midwest and the Detroit suburbs and spent a lot of time on Lake Michigan and Chicago. And just getting out and about is just wonderful. And I, I totally get that. And it's great that you get to do it with family, like your brother and your family. And as you started to kind of gravitate to Noah and eventually to the sanctuaries, what was it about Noah and then about the sanctuaries that really appealed to you? Well, Noah... I I applied for a position that I saw in the Washington Post, actually. It was in the newspaper back in the day. We, I mean, that's how we found our jobs. Yeah, back in the day. Um, actually, that one might have been online, but the, the first few jobs I got were definitely in the paper. I was just looking for something different, I think, something more challenging, mm -hmm. something to change up what I was doing. I think I was doing a lot of web work. I was working mm -hmm. with webmasters, but I was providing the design. Um, it was nice, but I was ready to reach out and, or branch out and do something different. So I applied for no, for a NOAA position where I split my time between marine protected areas and National Estuarian Research Reserves. Mm -hmm. I think I worked there for about two years when the position opened up with sanctuaries. And the reason I, and the reason to be honest, I really didn't know a ton about sanctuaries at that time. But as a visual guy and someone doing, putting pictures with text and rearranging everything, Sanctuaries had the best photo library. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I was always grabbing photos from their library for the work I was doing for, for marine protected areas. And then I got to know the graphic designer. There was one graphic designer there. And I got to know her a little bit, found out what she did, saw all of her work. And then a little bit later, I found out when she was leaving, um, the position went open and I talked to a few people, got an interview and ended up getting a job. Fantastic. So my next question then is, as you began to work more with the inside the sanctuaries, and, and I have to agree, when I go out to your website and I look at what's produced, I and, and this is where a little bit of my envy comes in. It's like, wow, I'm a former wedding photographer. I mean, you you guys get to, I mean, I suppose that's nice. You got to, people have to make a living doing that, but the, the the artwork, the graphics that are produced in support of the of the sanctuaries, and now especially because of the 50th anniversary celebration, are just phenomenal. As you began to acclimate into the National Marine Sanctuaries, what have been some of the the I don't know, let's call them highlight projects that you've worked on. Oh man, there's been quite a few highlight projects. I would say for me, probably some of the illustrations and the infographics I've worked on recently. We have a, a yearly publication called Earth is Blue, mm -hmm. and we like to put a center like fold out kind of infographic in the middle. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is is kind of emulate a little bit of sort of that National Geographic artwork look and feel and i actually have studied and looked at some of the artists at national geographic some of their work i've just spent hours studying what they do mm -hmm. and one of them i i do know a little bit just through the internet i reached out to him and i've been talking to him since his name's fernando baptista mm -hmm. and he is by far the hands down the best infographic um producer i've ever seen so I think for me, I've been doing infographics for a while, but not since my last two do I feel like I've actually reached the pinnacle of what I can accomplish. And I think I'm kind of at the, almost at the level, and I wouldn't say the level of Fernando Bati, he's just a master, but I think I'm at that level that, yeah, I mean, it could, some of my stuff could be probably featured in a National Geographic magazine. So I, I think I'm the biggest critic 
And so I would re I would really strive to get to that point. And it took several, several different infographics before I finally got to that point. When I say infographics, I'm talking about like just very heavily illustrated, uh, scientific kind of like infographics that give you a really good sense and feel of, of what's going on. I did a couple that I really enjoyed. One was a whale fall, which is when a, a whale dies of natural causes and falls to the bottom of the ocean. And it basically creates its own ecosystem, sort of you would think of a desert where there's nothing. And then all of a sudden, all these nutrients fall in one place. So it attracts all these millions of creatures. So that, that infographic, even though it's a little dark in terms of it being a, a whale death, it, it really pushed me to my limits in terms of creating and illustrating because I was doing so many different creatures, highlighting the different creatures, telling them, kind of listing what, what they do. You'd be an illustration of a, a creature, kind of blow it up. And then you would kind of give it its stats, sort of like a baseball card. So that was a fun. Yeah. I love that. And I recall as I was doing some research on you and the work that you have produced, and some of this you find it like on, on the, the website and Vernon shared some content with me. There was a photo in particular of, of a whale and all the various parts of the whale, which I thought was pretty cool. Obviously the in our banner, we have an infographic of where all the marine sanctuaries are and the proposed sanctuaries. And this is a, a point where I would share with you and, and our list. My listeners know this because I share it almost every episode. I'm an opportunistic podcaster. So that infographic that you just described or any of the other ones that you're really proud of, I would love to be able to include those as a part of our collages in our show notes, if you're okay with that. Oh, for sure. There's another one too that I really like is about sharks in the sanctuary. So I'll share that one as well. That'd be fantastic. I think it's a great way to highlight not just the photos of pretty fish and whales, but you know the, the artistic aspect. And so this work as an illustrator, photography, I mean, some of your photography work is amazing and you're also doing video work. So how is that? being included in some of the production work that you're doing? That's actually, a, that's what I, I would say besides illustration, production is by far one of my favorite things to do because it gets me out of my, from behind my desk, from behind my computer and actually out into the sanctuary. So that's, that's like a gift. And I'm, I feel very fortunate that I'm able to do that. So what was what exactly was the question? How did I end up doing that? Well, well I'm curious about the video production because that's that is another aspect of the work that you're producing. So I think I mean I've been doing video for a long time, mainly on my own, like on on the side just for fun because I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But you know, a little bit here and there, I would provide some vid. Actually, they came to me one time and asked if I would do a video if I'd be, and so I did a really short three minute video and they, and, and the sanctuary program really liked it. And so they kind of had me as they, I'm full-time graphic designer or, or visual information specialist. So I really didn't have the time to do too many videos, but I would be kind of a backup if they needed some help. And that was, that was several, that was several years ago. Okay. okay. And that was just in house. But then I jumped on an opportunity where we have two people that go out in the field, a producer and a filmmaker. And it's, it's, it's a task, even though it's fun, it's a task. It's a ton of equipment. Um, we're talking like 14 pel big Peloton cases. Mm. We have to log everywhere. So I ended up, I, I launched at the idea of just being like, Hey, do you guys need some help? I'll, I'll carry whatever you need. I just was at that point, I was just ready to get out from behind the computer and see a sanctuary to tell you the truth. Cause I okay. hear, I heard about all these sanctuaries for years. I've been looking at them at pit through pictures for years and years. So finally, I was like, I, I would love to go. So I went and I was basically, it was, it was funny. We give, we have a great time out in the field and we give each other nicknames and stuff. And from the video world, they would call me the grip or the best boy, which is a, a term <laughs> in the film industry. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, we, we, we give each other that even though, and basically what I was is was a gopher. I'd run around, change the lens, clean lenses, carry three backpacks at a time, okay. run whatever. And. And then when we were done doing interviews or, or when the video or the filmmaker was done getting a shot, 
I would say, hey, if we had some time, do you guys mind if I grab the, the camera? Because I have a, a photography background. Do you mind if I grab a couple shots? And then before long, after a few sanctuary visits, my photos were being used everywhere. Okay. And so I became a member of, that's how I got into it. And then if you still, I mean, then I got into the drone aspect because I kept thinking, I was watching the videos. I'm like, well, we need establishing shots. We need right. a drone shot. And this is when drones just came out. Right. So I ended up buying my own personal drone and snuck it on a trip, okay. got a couple of clips. And we're like, wow, this, it worked out amazing. So we used those clips to do the establishing shot. And then fast forward several years later, and now I have three drones that are owned by the foundation who I'm employed with. Right. And we make two of them usually on, on trips. And, and so I do the, I do the drone. So now I'm in charge of drones and photography. Okay. And also underwater. I do some underwater stuff as well. Okay. Like I said, one of the coolest jobs in the sanctuary, are you certified by the F whether some organization or through the FAA to fly drones? Yeah, you have to be, you have to be certified. You have to get a, a you have to get a, a license to the FAA to okay. fly, fly a drone. So I have one of those and I have to renew it every two years. So I think I've okay. renewed it three times now. Okay. Okay. And then we also have to worry about restricted. We have to make sure we have flight plans if we go into restricted airspace. It's kind of a, it's a lot. It's a big deal. I have uh, two colleagues in the Outdoor Writers Association of America. Chris Milgate is a documentary filmmaker. She just published a documentary about the migration of salmon from the Pacific into Idaho. And she had some of those establishing shots with the drones and my friend Chris Paparo is very big in the outdoor photography space, whale watching and, and conservation, shark conservation. He's a drone operator out in Long Island. You guys ought to all get together and have a party, I think. <laughs> I, 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 if I buy a drone, there's a Best Buy down the street and fly it in my apartment. But, Man, uh, we, just, we just purchased a new drone. Yeah. And I, was, I just mentioned to my colleagues that I go out in the field with, I mean, it blew my mind. It's amazing the technology now and yeah. how easy they are to fly. It's, it's, yeah. they're impressive. Yeah. Do you ever have these instances when somebody comes <clears throat> to you or they, they meet you, they discover what you do and they go, I know your work. You're that guy. Do you ever have her do that? I have that when I'm in the field and I visit a sanctuary office but okay. that's about that would probably be about it okay we're not we're not like the national parks or we don't get a ton of attention we don't have the budget for communication like the national parks have okay but yeah i mean every now yeah there's been a couple of times where i've been in a site and people it was it was interesting because i'm a very kind of a shy person so people will come up to me and and they've obviously seen my work because it gets sent to their their site or something mm -hmm. so um, I guess you could say in that instant, my um, repu reputation preceded me. And so that was interesting. Mm. If you had to list two or three reasons why the job you have is so fantastic, what would those be for you? Because it doesn't feel like work to me most of the time. Okay. And to, uh, to me, that's unbelievable. I've had tons of jobs where you're just looking at your wallet and you just can't wait to get home. Right. I somehow found myself in this position where my wife will yell at me because I'm sneaking off into my office to try to finish something or like, I just can't get it out of my mind. I feel right. like the creative juices are flowing. Yeah. I got to get it out before I lose it. I look forward to getting back to work. So I feel very, very fortunate and lucky because I know, I know a lot of people don't have that. And I didn't have that for a while. Right. So I think that's probably, that's probably the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious. Again, we've got the the photos of your boys behind you. They're older, and, and when there's the uh, and I'm single, so I don't have kids, but I do remember there was bring your parents to work day. Did your did you ever go to to those events for your kids' school and you had to stand up there and talk about what you did? I haven't. Like I said, I'm very kind of quiet about what I do. I don't think my kids necessarily even 
understand everything I do. They yeah. do know I do some, I think the, the things they see the most are maybe the illustrations because I'm working on them down in the basement and they'll come down and check it. And they love to work in, in my office in the basement with me sometimes and draw too. They have a drawing pad or something. Oh, nice. We'll work that's, together, which is fun. Yeah. I kind of shy away from a lot of public things. I don't, I, this is really nice. It feels like we're just hanging out and talking, yeah. but I don't really like to show, show my stuff off. I just, I, I get a little uneasy. I like my work to kind of speak for itself. Okay. I, I get it. I get it. And yeah. so every once in a while though, it's good to kind of lean in a little bit. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that because by, I'm like thinking, I, I, by the way, I've got a couple of years on you, but I'm thinking, man, I want to be your, I want to be your grip or your side lighter. When I, I, I remember when photography, we had side lighters mm -hmm. and I was the side lighter. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So a lot of lot, talk That's about technology work. changing. Yeah. No, we could definitely have a be couple beer stories. We, we can't, <laughs> we can't have that on, online. I look forward to it. All right. So thinking about some of the project work, is there, I mean, again, it's, a lot of it is the people are recognizing your great work, but looking back, maybe some of the work you're doing now, most recently, you talked about the infographics. What are some of the projects you're like, wow, this, th this is, this project just crushed it that you are most proud of? Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, I mean, I'm also working on visitor centers as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want me to get into that. I know you sure. kind of mentioned that. Sure. Yeah, I'm starting, like, we, we're starting, we kind of formed a team at headquarters where I think they used to hire out vendors to do all the design for vi visitor centers for kind of like remodeling mm -hmm. and, or a new visitor center. So we had a, we had the opportunity to, our first one was a few years ago before the pandemic to put together a visitor center design, all the designs and exhibits at a new visitor center in Kauai, mm -hmm. Hawaii. And so we worked on that for a long time, six months or so. I had to figure out all the dimensions, kind of sort of a 3D CAD, trying to figure out the room, mm -hmm. how people walk. I mean, I had, I had two people working with me as a team. We all worked together on this and it took a lot of work to figure it out, working with the vendors. And then we showed up a week prior and put it all together. It was a crazy week. It was right from the hotel to the visitor center and back. I mean, we were putting in, I don't know, 12 hour days, maybe even longer. And um, it was like one of those remodeling house shows where you're just trying to get it done. You have all these things to do. You're doing the checklist. We're working with the volunteers as well. There's a big grand opening where they're going to have these native Hawaiian dancers doing a ceremony. And so we have to get it all ready before that, that deadline. And at the, the last day we, we had a, uh, there was a kind of a thank you dinner with pizza. I think it was and some drinks and for all the volunteers and people that put in time and effort for, for putting together the visitor center. But my team was still, we were still kind of behind the eight ball and we were still working up until the very last minute. We couldn't make that dinner, but we were starving. So we ran over there to get a slice of pizza. And when I walked in, uh, I was introduced as the person who put together the design and I got an ovation, which shocked me. And oh, again, wow. put me in, put me in kind of a deer in the headlights, like, oh my God, I didn't, I wasn't expecting this. Had to say a few words. But that's when I realized, because that's when I realized I got it right. Because when you're, when you're doing visuals and trying to communicate through visuals, you got to get it right. If you're telling a story about native Hawaiians or mm -hmm. people. So I did a lot of back and forth and worked with native Hawaiians to make sure I wasn't being disrespectful in any of the, any of the designs, make sure I was communicating it right. Mm -hmm. And so that, that ovation let me know that, that that we didn't write. And since then, and after the fact, I was getting thank you letters from different people. And so that made me feel like I had a huge impact and it was nice to see, it was nice to see the appreciation for it. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And I appreciate you sharing that. And by the way, that was the aha moment. So I, I love, I love that story. And I am curious with the, you talked about volunteers. I want to touch on the foundation, but just before that, the, the events leading up to the 50th anniversary celebration, what type of uh, 
work are you doing in support of, of, of this? I've been putting together, well, the first thing I did was I redid the logo. So the new, lo the new logo. Sure. We just revamped this logo so it's a little bit more noticeable, especially when it's next to other logos. The other one was a little bit, it was a great logo. I love the logo. Okay. But it just got lost every time we were next to another organization. Okay. So we spent a lot of time on that. Um, but the big thing I would say that's taking a lot of my time and resources is we're putting together a poster. We're doing a poster series, one for each sanctuary. Okay. So we're kind of like mimicking a little bit the idea that the national parks has. Mm -hmm. So you know how back, I think it was in the 30s. And since then, they've been making a, a poster for each national park. So that was, that's the idea. And we're up to, I think, about six now. Okay. Six of them. And you can find them on our website that we could probably put put a little bit later in the credits or wherever. Sure. People and and by the it. way, I already downloaded that particular graphic to my computer. And I was actually trying to figure out, I wonder what that would look like as of my background on, as we're doing the interview here. So I've got it. Thank you. And I'm going to use it. Oh, which uh, one? Uh, one of the posters? There is, there's like there. Oh yeah. We have a graphic where we have all five uh, of them or six yeah. of them together. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's cool. That is good stuff. Oh, thank and, you. I appreciate yeah. that. That's yeah. a fun one. I'm really enjoying doing this. Yeah. yeah. And for our listeners, you're going to love this one. I mean, I, Matt, I, I published Ed Lyman's episode today and we put, created a collage of a lot of the, the whales and the support teams that are going out there doing disentanglement and Man, if people who are listening to this podcast or Ed's podcast are not going, wow, I have to go out there and go to this sanctuary. Ed blows it, my mind. Ed he blows does my, some amazing work. Yeah. yeah. And so same thing with what you're doing. You're capturing, using your skills as an artist to create these wonderful graphics. And that graphic is amazing. And so I'm excited to be able to share that with our listeners as well. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So. Thinking about the sanctuaries is, and I can understand though, it surprises me that sometimes you're just stuck in your basement doing your work, but you have gone out to the sanctuaries. Is there, and I know the story that you just shared about uh, Kauai, what are one or two of the sanctuaries that you have visited and done some work at and you're like, wow, or is there a sanctuary that you haven't been to? Like, I need to get there. Well, two on my mind right now, in terms of the wow factor, would probably be the National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa and Olymp the Olympic Coast National Marine Sanctuary. Those two, I mean, I, I think I could, man, I could visit those. I don't think, like a million times, I don't think I'd be sick of it. One that I haven't been to that I'd love to get to would probably be Flower Garden Banks, which is okay. off of Mexico. Sure. And probably Gray's Reef, which is right outside of, uh, is it Charleston, South Carolina? Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have you ever done any dark sky photography, Milky Way? Oh, I have. Okay. I did one. I love doing those. I just, I don't do it very often, but I, I did, we did do one. We were, we were dropped off on one of the islands in Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, which is kind of off LA. Okay. And there's a lighthouse yeah. there. And so that was actually featured right. in a Smithsonian book, which is really cool. It's a, it's a, I yeah. love that shot. It's a beauty. You can see the Milky Way and you see the white lighthouse in the foreground. It was amazing because at the same time, what you want to see is all these birds. I mean, this is a nesting area for birds. So it's just between the, the lighthouse being so close. And the birds, it was extremely loud. And we didn't get any sleep that night because of, we were sleeping in tents on the island and we had zero sleep because of all the noise. It was, it was really interesting. Right. I, uh, I, I love that. It, my love out here in Las Vegas is getting out to the desert and doing dark sky work. And so now you and I have an opportunity to, to find a, a rendezvous point and to, to, to get some of this work done. That would be great. Let's, we can I create love, together. I love that dark sky photography. It's great. Oh, Long fantastic. exposures. I love those. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious now, what are your next steps? I mean, you're, you're, part, you're, you're supporting the, the, the marine sanctuaries. 
you're part of the foundation. So you are, you're, you're, you work for them. You're, it's kind of like you're on loan and, or maybe you can explain a little bit about that, but tell us more about the work of the foundation. Yeah. So the foundation, it supports the National Marine Sanctuary, sort of like the National Parks Foundation support the mm -hmm. national parks. They, they're, they're wonderful. They're a great, great organization. They also work with Congress on our behalf right. sometimes. So I was a, I've been a contractor basically for the government for a long time and I've switched between. Okay. So basically I've had different employers, different contractors, and I just work. My, my, my position was at the office of National Marine Sanctuaries. So they just switched me over to the foundation because it was easier, especially when I'm, okay. because I'm a diver too, because right. the insurance gotcha. or diver, the sure. other, the other contractors didn't support scuba diving. So that was one reason I moved over. Okay. Okay. And before we head out, yeah, I, and I love, again, I, I think this is a great interview. I mean, it's, again, it's like having a beer with a friend or an adult this beverage with a friend you haven't seen. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It gets really informative. And as you begin to think about what's next in your career, what do you, what do you see doing? How do you see advancing your, your craft? Oh man, I think, uh, I just, honestly, I'm, I'm doing what I love. I think I just keep pushing myself to be better. To tell you the truth. Okay. It's not like I want to do something else or, or go somewhere else. Or I think I just want to get better at what I do and keep producing. I think the last five years I've been doing some extremely creative things. Mm -hmm. It's probably the pinnacle so far of what I've been able to accomplish. And I hope I keep mm -hmm. producing at that level. I'm in a position right now where I, where, you know, I'm fortunate and I have such great coworkers, awesome boss that they allow me to do a lot of the things that they know that I'm passionate about. And they know they're going to get some great projects out of me because I am passionate mm -hmm. about it. So I, I don't know. I, I think just maybe, I mean, on my mind, if you were to ask me today what I want to do, I've been working with our, our video, our filmmaker and our social media out, our social media coordinator to do a lot more reels. So they're that, mm -hmm. those really fast kind of videos. So we've been, right. we've been doing a lot more of those lately. So okay. I'm trying to get a little bit better at those and, and okay. make them extremely interesting. Okay. Okay. Before we head out, we have a uh, segment in our show. Well, we have two segments, the aha moment, which we have covered about the adventure in Kauai. Sounds fascinating. And the fact that you were able to go out there and you worked your butt off, you and your team worked your butt off, but you created this wonderful exhibit. And and that's, you know, doing that kind of work and knowing you're making a difference and people are going to appreciate it. That's wonderful. And Another aspect that, that we like to include in our shows is what we call an insight to go. And this is an opportunity for our guests to share with our audience, whether it's a quote, a book, or a, some advice that you would give someone in our listening audience about, here's how you can ensure you're on the right path in your journey. And this is what helped me. Perhaps this is also going to help you. So Matt, what would be your insight to go? Well, that's an, that's an easy one for me because this okay. book is always on my mind because it kind of it it kind of changed my life for the better when I read it and had kind of that aha moment. And it's like that that pendulum shift. I forget what they call that, but it, it changed the way I view everything. But it's okay. a book by Eckhart Tolle, Tolle or okay. Eckhart Tolle. I'm sorry, I'm not sure okay. how to pronounce his name. And it's called uh, A New Earth. And it just helped me get out of my mind. I mean, I, I'm always, I was always worried about the future or always thinking about the past. And it just, it just helped me kind of enjoy the present moment and not worry so much. And I think I, some of the lessons I learned in that book, I, I try to apply almost every day to help me, help me live a better life and a happier life and kind of project, kind of project a more positive energy instead of moping around like maybe I used to do back in the day. All right. All right. Well, we will definitely provide a backlink to Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth. And I am actually right after this call going to go out to Amazon and get it on my Kindle. So <laughs> oh, you love thank it. you for that. Thank you for that. Before we head out, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and the sanctuary and the foundation, where are the best places that we should be taking them? 
Oh, we have, uh, I mean, the sanctuary website is amazing. It's, um, sanctuaries.noaa.gov and okay. the foundation, they, their, their website's incredible as well. And that's marine sanctuaries.org. I'm sorry, marine sanctuary.org. And then I do have a, a personal website that when people ask me, like, or if they're curious, like, what, what do you do? Or I want to, they're trying to figure out what kind of product they want. I'll point in my website and they can see the different things I do. And okay. that's just my name, mattmackintosh.com. Fantastic. Well, we will provide the, the backlinks there. And I know the sanctuaries as well as the foundation have social sites and we'll provide those oh, yeah, they have as great usual. social yeah. sites. They're produced, they're putting stuff out almost every day. If, I mean, they yeah. are putting stuff out every day. I mean, it, there is just a wealth of information and, and I love the fact, not only that the, the information is there, the high quality of it, and this 50th anniversary celebration is just a wonderful way to continue to spread the word and really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and kind of leaning into this. I know this is your first podcast, but I, I think it's a phenomenal interview and, and our listeners are going to really enjoy it. So Matt, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us on the Outdoor Adventure Series. Yeah, thanks for having me, Howard. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Fantastic. Listen, I want you to stay in the line. We're going to do a quick close and then you and I can have a final chat. Okay. We'll do. All right. Okay, folks, there you have it. Another fantastic episode as we work with NOAA's Office of the National Marine Sanctuaries, celebrating their 50th year of ocean conservation and stewardship. Our guest today was Matt McIntosh, visual information specialist at the sanctuaries. And really, well, this was not yeah, this was kind of sanctuary, not specific, but really an overarching view because the work he does impacts all the sanctuaries and the messaging, the visual messaging that is going out. I mean, it's the creative work, whether it's the photography, the infographics, setting up the, the helping us to design and build out the, the visitor centers. And really the, the center in Kauai, I've seen some photos of it, is is amazing. And we are hopefully going to give you the links again to the to the websites, National Marine Sanctuaries websites, so you can kind of visit each one of the sanctuaries virtually and hopefully get that sanctuary in your future travel plans. And really appreciated Matt's background and really kind of what makes him tick. And also appreciate him gifting us with the reference to the Eckhart Tolle uh, book, uh, A New Earth. So again, we're going to provide backlinks to that as well. Now, you can find us uh, in this episode on our website, OutdoorAdventureSeries.com. Uh, we are also on Facebook and on LinkedIn, our Outdoor Adventure Series pages. And we are on YouTube. We'll have a podcast short of this episode with Matt. Uh, up about two or three days before the actual episode drops. And once the episode drops, it'll be on our website, as well as all of the major podcast directories. So once again, we hope you enjoyed uh, today's episode. Uh, do go out and, and visit uh, the websites for the sanctuary, uh, sanctuaries.noaa.gov, as well as the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. We'll provide that backlink as well as their social sites. And uh, really, you're in for another gift from the NOAA Office of the National Marine Sanctuary. So hope you enjoyed today's episode. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. And we will see you on a future episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Take care now.